I've been busy, so just, just bear with me. Um, healing up. Things are looking a little bit better. Hannah decided to um, do a video a little bit different. Um, just some thoughts on uh, some of the stuff that's been going on. So uh, common sense says that uh, if you have uh, drops of water, drops of waters make springs, streams, creeks, rivers, lakes, ponds, oceans, whatever. They make bodies of water drops of water and um, you know uh, I'm going to get back to that but uh, first we need to talk about well, there's a lot of people who want to save the planet well the planet needs balance there are deserts and jungles and prairies and and mountainscapes and ice caps and all these things are in balance the world balances itself ecologically. Um, so when you want to change all that, you're you're messing with a balance. Uh, so um, you know, people want to move water from flooding areas to desert areas. Um, so so what can we? Um, what can we worry about with this? Well, one, we're trying to figure out how to uh, take care of things like power and uh, getting power from water that's dammed up and um, be able to power a grid system that is eventually supposed to handle electronic vehicles. Right now, we're failing miserably at this. Um, I don't think pumping water uh, across a vast continent is going to help in any sense. Um, it's probably going to cause more problems than it's worth. Um, it's going to mess with and mess up ecosystems. One, you got places that aren't used to a lot of water. You start pumping water into these places, you're going to have uh, other issues. Plus, evaporation is going to take a lot of the water that ends up in these areas and dump it somewhere else that's not used to having more water introduced into the clouds and the vapors and, and, and cause more rain. Uh, possibly more erosion, more plant damage. Um, you know, I'm, go I'm going to get to this. Then, uh, then you're talking about people who want to do desalination. Desalination sounds great but the minerals and things that come from that they either have to go and be used or disposed of and historically people just don't dispose of that stuff correctly and it's probably going to cause even more ecological problems unless really monitored um, you know let's get back to the drops of water the drops of water come from the sky or collect on things and, and drip to the ground. And all this condensation adds to springs and underground water, aquifers, and then it bubbles up to the surface of the earth. If, if done properly, it filters through sand and silt and lots of things going through the earth. Um, if we were still making glass containers instead of plastic containers, we could always grind those back up into sand, which would filter more water um, in some degree. Um, so then you got, um, you know, the next issue. If, if drops of water make bodies of water, then what does removing and storing vast amounts of water in bottles and jugs and containers uh, on a commercial scale due to the amount of water available for the every person on the planet. Uh, I don't know what the percentage of this is. I don't know if anybody studied the percentage of this, but there are bottles that sit and they're half empty or bottles that are all the way full and nobody is, is doing anything with them. They're stored away somewhere. Um, they're collecting plastic particulates. They're collecting plastic particulates and they are also 
um, not adding to evaporation, which doesn't add to condensation, which does not add to the um, collection of water in lakes and streams and aquifers and everywhere that you need water. So what happens when it's pumped out and it's not put back? Um, the aquifers and the groundwater produces and then there is a dome that collapses and those places are lost and damaged because the water is not being replenished naturally. So what do we need to do? We need to build um, landscape that will slow down erosion and we need to plant it with native plants in every region lots of plants a variety of plants they don't have to be trees they can be shrubs they can be small plants they can be ground cover but they should be native uh, it, and possibly allow some naturalized highly beneficial plants to also go into these areas we need to stop paving everything uh, we need to uh, take away um, the required footprint for a lot of homes because requiring these great big massive homes with a great big surface that sheds water but has no ground surface to absorb the water is what's causing a lot of flooding. <laughs> um, you know, or making areas that flood worse. Um, so let's, let's take this around to common sense. Um, if you need rescued from an area that has a drought or a flood, i.e. a desert or a wetland, then you probably shouldn't live there. You know, if, if you cannot survive in the conditions that you choose to live, you should move. Um, it's time people start figuring out how to be a solution and not a problem. You know, I, I listen to this, uh, you know, people talking about different things from insurance to... Um, you know, rules and regulations for, for different regions and how to live and how to build and everything else. If we quit messing with things, we'll be a whole lot better off. Um, you know, you got a politician that uh, wants to wash their car in a desert, you know, uh, and they want to pump more water there so they can wash their car and plant grass that's not native and um, golf okay you want golf learn how to sand golf because this whole building a golf course in the middle of the desert um, doesn't make any sense you know build in a plain and a prairie where grasses are native use native grasses yeah it may not be green but it may be very very beneficial and the the level of skill is going to be the same but basically what I'm saying, drops of water make bodies of water. Bodies of water make clouds. Clouds and ecosystem control drought and rainfall and probably global warming. Um, and I'm not big on this global warming theory because Mr. Wizard a long time ago said if you had a cup and it was mostly filled with water and you had ice on top, that if the ice evaporated and condensed, that the glass wouldn't overflow. So why are we worrying about glasses overflowing, i.e. a planet overflowing with water? It's only got so much and we've been taking out a bunch of it and storing it. What we need to do is stop storing water on a commercial level and um, introduce water back into the ecosystems, stop introducing microplastics into that ecosystem and let plants, bacteria, algae, fungi, um, rhizomes, whatever, fix the earth. The plants will fix the earth. If we stopped doing anything today, the plants would take over our homes, our driveways, streets, everything. And in a few years, a few decades, whatever, 
most of it would be gone. It, it'd take care of itself, except for the crap we made out of stuff that lasts too long. That would still be here. But we really need to concentrate on not ruining our ecosystem, not, not messing with the ecosystem. Let rainfall, let condensation happen and stop bottling up all the water or storing it in tanks or facilities, tell the big wigs at uh, Nestle and Aquafina and, um, you know, Fiji, um, you know, places, uh, places that bottle water and food companies and beverage companies to quit stockpiling water and beer companies. You know, yes, that's, that's how they make their money. But if we continue down the path we're going, the only people who are going to be able to afford water are the people in those companies. And, uh, you know, I don't know what the percentage of the effect is, but these same people want to go to space and what are they going to want to take? Water. Uh, none of this makes sense. Okay, enough ranting. Let's, let's let the planet save itself, okay?